What's up, fish tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tank, bringing it to you live on Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So today, I want to unpack the single biggest advice I can give all of you wonderful fish tank people. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. Um, I'm only going to touch on the tip of the iceberg with this topic, but I feel like uh, once we understand the tip of the iceberg, we can really break down everything that's underneath. And um, I'm really pumped about it. Everybody asks me all the time, how do I grow a carpet? My fish are sick. Uh, my plants won't grow. All these things can be addressed with the single uh, biggest advice I can give you. I am down here in front of the 220. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to unpack a little lesson. I've got a whiteboard over to my left that I'm going to be working off of. I don't have any water handy. I uh, wish I would have thought about that before I started the live stream. But we're live and we're rolling, so we'll just be a little dehydrated. That's okay. Um, but I do want to unpack this because I think it will be like, if, it's, if the core understanding of this topic uh, is understood, everything else kind of just flows down from there. So I am super excited. And um, yeah, like and share the live stream so more people can check it out. And uh, yeah, it'll be a good, good time. So I've been uh, wanting to do this for a while. You notice it's coming a little later today, and I'm having a good old time. So without further ado, I'm gonna begin by grabbing the old whiteboard over here. And I want to talk about the basics right here. Got a wonderful whiteboard here. I know you're all excited, I'm excited. And um, yeah, so uh, if you know how long it took me to draw these fish, by the way, these were, these were not easy to draw. So I want to break down the basics of the nitrogen cycle, but then I've got a tip at the end that will kind of tie it all together. And I really think that like, if everybody can just like get this, um, everything will be better. So what a board, you like the board, good. So here's where we're going. Yeah, like, share, thumbs up if you're enjoying this. So here's the deal. We've got our fish tank right here, and we've got our fish. And as everybody knows, when you feed your fish, got my whiteboard here, we're gonna use red as ammonia, okay? When we feed our fish, now I'm using the food. The food comes in, right? Food's in, where's my eraser? Here's my eraser. Food comes in, we feed our fish. This produces ammonia, NH4. This is bad news, okay? This is, this is no bueno, this is death, right? You have too much ammonia, death. You have dead fish, everybody is down, dead, like, like RIP, okay? Dead fish. So ammonia is bad, everybody knows that. So now we're gonna break down the nitrogen cycle. You love the fish drawing, I'm enjoying the fish drawing. Okay, so then of course we go from ammonia to nitrogen trites okay so we go up the next step i'm going to use black here again and we go over here and our next step is no2 which is nitrite with the ri okay still harmful to fish still gonna hurt fish okay still not good okay no2 this is still gonna hurt our fish now, I'm going to talk about the bacteria in a second here. And then we go from here to, i have got to slide the whole thing over here. I'm going to cover up 220 for a minute. And we're going to go to nitrates. That's a woo. No, sorry. NO3. And these can be removed by water changes or plants. I'm actually going to give these, these are going to get a different color. These are going to go blue here. Okay. And everybody should understand this. This is some basics. This is not, not high level stuff at all. But I really want people to understand if you've got this core part down, you're good. Um, we're starting here, okay? So we've, we're feeding our fish. Now here's the deal. Everybody knows that you cannot just cycle a tank right away. It takes time to cycle a tank. Um, I recommend that I don't, I, I mean, when I'm setting up a tank, like, I don't have any fish for like a month, okay? So what happens is we have this blue marker here and the blue is going to represent the beneficial bacteria. And I'm going to put this all along the bottom here. This is the blue. Notice I've got, notice this wonderful, you guys see what I'm doing? It's a pink, my pink uh, American Girl doll thing. We are going to show you the 220 in a minute. I'm going to do some maintenance on it when I get done talking. 
So this is all the beneficial bacteria here. And what this does, and this is the big part that a lot of people overlook, but this part is, you can't see this, but it's so, so, so valuable and so many people overlook it that I really want to like draw it and emphasize it because it's not there in the beginning, but when you have it like, when you have it starting initially, you don't have this. And I've killed fish before by not having enough beneficial bacteria uh, in my aquarium. So you can't see it, but we want it to be there. We want to make sure we have a nice bed for it. And I'm going to talk about that, that whole part of it more, the bacteria bed. But this lives in your substrate, okay? So this is the bacteria. This is the uh, nitrosonoma or whatever. This is the converted from ammonia to nitrite. And then we've got nitrates over here, okay? So all of this beneficial bacteria. Now, like I say, I wait a month. I mean, you can get stuff. Our friends at Fluval have some, you know, bacteria start. I actually use this stuff at trade shows. It works pretty quick um, to speed this up. But you don't want to rush this, folks. You do not want to rush this. This is the important part, okay? Because once you have this bacteria load figured out, everything runs smoother. Now, here's the rub. When you start off an aquarium, and I'm going to get to the high level part, when you start off an aquarium, they say, you know, don't add a lot of fish right away. So I'm going to erase all these fish and don't overfeed your fish, right? This is the basics. So we have one fish. Why did I do this one fish? Because this one fish right here took me forever to draw. I had to like redo it like three times. So we've got this one fish right here. I'm going to slide over a little bit. This one fish, because in the initial stages, we don't have all of this. So all of this down here is not available. So we might have like two little bacteria, right? So we don't have the capacity to have a bunch of fish poop coming in. Oh, fish poop is red, sorry. Fish poop is in red. It's Cause we don't have the bacteria load to handle it. So we got one fish. So this fish is taking a huge dump. He's crapping everywhere, but it's just one fish. We don't add a ton of fish because we've got one fish because in the early stages, we don't have all this beneficial bacteria. Very, very important. Okay, we don't have all this beneficial bacteria. And I've got one marker and it's a green marker and I'm saving for the end. Okay, so we don't have all this. So this fish is taking a dump, but we gotta make sure that we have enough beneficial bacteria for this guy to take this dump. And it's gotta convert from here to nitrites, then over here to nitrates. And then we're like, okay, now look, I don't test my water. I haven't tested my water in a very long time, but obviously we wanna make sure we're through the ammonia if you're testing, the nitrites if you're testing, and then on to nitrate. Okay, so we've got one fish. Now, when we have this fish and we've waited a while and we're using some jump start stuff, or whatever, we start to have more of this beneficial bacteria. This stuff lives in your gravel, this stuff lives in your filter, this stuff lives like, you know, primarily in your gravel and in your substrate, okay? So this is certainly gross. So then what we do, we add more fish. Now let's see how good I can do live drawing another angel fish. This is not gonna be easy to do, I'm gonna do my best. We're gonna add one here. Eh, I gotta take the tail, see, it's hard to do. Gotta have my fancy fish. All right, and we got this fish here. That's a fancy one, all right. And then, yeah, it goes up like that. And then this fish comes in, this fish is happy. This fish is like, hell yeah, I'm in with this dude. This fish is no longer pissed off. This fish is also happy. So now we got two happy fish. They can take their happy craps, because we got more bacteria. So our bacteria is going. Here is the best part about the planted aquarium, okay? This is the single best part. This is the part that I enjoy the most about this. This is that, like, like this is the part that is the single best part for me, and I'm actually going to demonstrate this by doing something really gross in this 220 in just a little bit. Here is the single best part about the entire situation here for the planted tank, and it is this. I have the wrong color marker. Plants absorb nitrate. Like, stand up for this, D. Like plants, like a ridiculous amount of plants. Okay, everybody, so these take nitrate out. So we want a ridiculous amount of plants, right? Like a ridiculous amount of plants. And what happens, this is the single biggest tip that I think I can give anyone with their aquarium, and you can see I'm sweating because I'm having a good time with this, is this. If you can always have your plant load be extremely greater than, I'm going to make a big line for this. If you can have your plant load be larger, right here, your plant load is greater than your fish load, 
like exponentially better, you will always win. Okay, you will always, always, always win. Does that make sense? Because you have this here, so then you have your plants who can take the end product of all this bacteria. Now you have to have all the bacteria going as well, but if everybody can fundamentally understand that if you have more and more and more plants than you do fish, you are going to kill it. You're never gonna to have to worry about anything, okay? Like, I've always said that I can actually take a dump in this 220 behind me, and I've decided that today, I'm going to actually defecate in the 220 in front of you all live. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So you might get a little grossed out. This might be banned in some other countries, but actually, if you can hang on, I'm not, I'm not gonna wipe and put it in there, but I am gonna take a crap in here. So hang on, let me. I'm not really gonna crap in the aquarium, but you get the point, okay? You get the point. So if you have a ridiculous amount of plants, all the beneficial bacteria available, and a light fish load, you're never gonna have to, you're not gonna have to worry about algae as much. You're not gonna have to worry about your fish getting sick. Does that make sense? Because you're gonna have better water quality. Because 99% of the problems you have in your aquarium are from poor water quality, right? Like most of them, your fish get sick, um, you get algae, you get algae because you don't have enough plants, right? You don't have enough plants. You have enough plants to absorb all that stuff, right? You got too much light, whatever. We can talk about all the different variables, but if everybody can understand that your fish load right here has to be less than, this is the greater than, you win. You win all the time. Does that make sense? You win constantly. Anybody lost? Is anybody on the thing completely lost? Say I'm lost. Like, type it in. Like I had a teacher who used to do that. It was great. It was like, Mr. Hinkle, like I'm lost. Like, anybody lost? Like I don't understand. Okay. So we always want to go for having a higher amount of plants than we have fish. And then we want to make sure we have, nope, everybody's good. You're lost. Okay, good. You guys are good. Now, then it becomes a matter of this, okay? So we've got our heavy, heavy plant load. Then it becomes, okay, Dustin, how do we grow a ridiculous amount of plants? There's this woman I know. She's in her mid-20s. She's smoking hot. Her name is Mother Nature, okay? What would Mother Nature do, okay? What would Mother Nature do? She's a brunette, she looks good. Um, what would Mother Nature do? And you have to ask yourself, what would Mother Nature do? You go to a lake, like there's a ridiculous amount of plants, there's not a ridiculous amount of fish in that lake compared to the amount of plants. This is so important. Now, there are a couple things that I'm going to touch on just a little bit here. The first thing is that I grow plants and I believe that plants grow best in some sort of like good substrate. Now, I don't wanna get into the whole dirt, a mono soil, you know, fluoride, stratum, whatever. Like, I don't want to get into all that. But one must understand that plants grow best when they have good substrate. So if anybody asks me, like, hey, I'm trying to grow plants, the first question I ask them is, what is your substrate? Because that determines what kind of plants you have. So if you want to have good plant growth and you don't want to have to worry about fish and too many fish, you have to have a good way to feed your plants. Now, Greg Moran at Seachem, I don't even know if he's with Seachem anymore. I got another, told me this almost 10 years ago. Plants absorb four to 400 times more nutrients through their roots than through their stems and leaves, okay? So the bottom layer, this whole layer down here, as I put up my pink chair, look at this pink chair, I've got girls, look at this, pink chair, this whole layer, is the most overlooked part of any aquarium, whether you got plants or not, because this is where A, the beneficial bacteria lives, and B, where plants eat, okay? We want healthy plants, we want happy plants. Our plants eat at their roots. They eat here, how you wanna kick it? Gonna kick it root down, like break it all down, gonna bring it root down, it's not a put down. I put my foot down, and then I'm making some love, I put my root down, okay? So, it's super important, and it's the most overlooked part of the entire planet aquarium. Like, it blows my mind how many people, I got eco-complete, I got gravel, my plants don't grow. Well, your plants eat at the roots, okay? Your plants eat at the roots. Very important. And your beneficial bacteria lives in your substrate. Now, I don't have any scientific information on this, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if you have a nutrient-rich substrate, that is also helping the beneficial bacteria grow unlike just plain gravel, okay? Is everybody with me so far? I am out of breath. It's been a good 14 minutes. I hope you're enjoying it. 
So I really want to hammer this home. Again, to recap, we have a larger plant load, large plant load. We have a light fish load. There's some other variables with this too, okay? The other variables are this. You young college punks are getting all stoned looking in front of your aquariums, and what do you do? You feed the crap out of your plants, or your fish. You're just feeding your fish, you're feeding your fish. You got fish around your tube, bro. We got a pizza, let's feed the fish, bro. And you're feeding the fish. You feed the fish too much. You feed the fish too much, guess what? This isn't equal. This is gone. Now all of a sudden, you've got this with the red. You've got this is greater than. And then what happens? You overfeed your fish, you're hanging out, you're feeding your fish, and you're like, bro, this fish, I have to have this fish right here, and you add this other fish right here, and this fish is gonna suck, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna kill it. And you're just like, I'm keep feeding, dude, you get those, I've done it. And you add all these fish. Now all of a sudden, your fish load is greater than your plant load, and you're dead, you're dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. You screwed it all up. So that's why I only feed my fish about every other day or so, okay? Big fish, you also could have too big of fish. And look, I'm battling this in multiple tanks. I'm gonna show you the 220 here behind me, then I'm gonna do a drink of water, then I'm gonna do some Q&A. But I really want everybody to understand this though, okay? Everybody get this, because if you can have a higher plant load, now we're just a mess, but if you can have a higher plant load than you do fish load, everything is happy. It's all just happy, happy, happy. Because you have a higher plant load and everything is good and we use the happy green and everything is happy when this is bigger. Which is why in the tank behind me here, I'm taking this off and you can see I have a ridiculous plant load. Now I'm not gonna poop in this aquarium. I thought about doing it. I realized I might get you know a little bit of heat for that so I'm not gonna. But that's the key. So if everybody can just understand that, that you can have a high, high, high plant load and a low, 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 low fish load, you will be way, way, way better off. So let's talk about the 220. The 220 behind me here has been dirted since, I don't even know, 2009. I've got dirt as my substrate. I've got a Karenum Natanz right here. This tank has been pretty much neglected for quite a while. Um, the fish, there's hardly any fish in here. And I'll talk about the fish in a second. I've got a heavy, heavy, heavy plant load, which means I do not have to do as much work on this aquarium. And I have a light, light, light fish load. So I've got dirt. The dirt feeds my plants. They're good. They're rolling. They're no problem. They can feed. Like I don't need to add fertilizers to the chemicals or anything to the tank. Periodically I might, but for the most part I don't. And I've got a light fish load. And this is balanced. And that is what you need to go for, my wonderful fish tank people. Good. This is as good for you as it was for me. All right. So with that said, I am uh, 